We got some spicy things to talk about tonight, I will say, Deuce. Yeah, a lot of information coming in today that we received from a few sources that we have developed over the years. Um, very credible sources and never steered us wrong before. Um, we want to say what we're going to divulge. We have been given full clearance to do so just to make sure that, you know, the discretion was there and our sources obliged and said it was okay. All right. So Troy Weaver is heading out the door for the Detroit Pistons. Uh, that's the big news. Um, we have some some big changes coming, of course, with Langdon. I'm a Troy Weaver fan. Um, and, you know, I really don't want to see it happen. I would rather see him try to work with Langdon, but I guess the conversation just didn't materialize the way that we thought it could possibly. So with that said, it's looking like the Pistons are going to move forward and go on that search and look for a new GM. Uh, he's going to bring in somebody that he wants. It's, it's looking like he's going to reface his team the way that he wants it done. So with that said, you walk in the door as the, the president of basketball operations. This is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see you come in, make the decisions, and and build a team, put your staff on this team. This decision has already been in place for some time now. It just hasn't been officially made yet. And Troy is hurt because he really does love Detroit. He has family ties here. And he really feels he wasn't allowed to make many decisions on his own, which is something that we've kind of talked about forever, right? We, we've kind of <laughs> we've yeah. seen this smoke for a while now, and now we see it turning into fire as it's coming out. Um, but he wasn't allowed to fully be the GM of this team. And when things failed, when things didn't go the way that, you know, they wanted them to go, he would receive the brunt of the blame for it, and he would be the punching bag often for it. And... We were also told that, you know, it's a dirty business, but Troy also knows that it comes with the territory. Um, and the good thing is that people around the NBA know who he really is and know what he's capable of and knows what he can bring to the table. They, they, the things that we've talked about as far as him not having the flexibility in to, to make the decisions is not just limited to us. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very well known around the league that that is the case. And so for it to be coming out now, I think is good for him just from a transparency standpoint, right? And it appears that Tom wanted Troy to stay, but Aaron and Langdon wanted to demote Troy. So that's what led them to this decision. And so Aaron, you know, Aaron tell him he has some ownership. And so he has a lot of pull. And the sad part is that Tom and Troy are actually still cool. And Tom is still trying to somewhat look out for Troy on his way out, but he didn't intervene when it came to, you know, Arn Tellum and others wanting to fire Troy. Um, and something to keep an eye on too is Arn Tellum's son, okay. Eric Tellum. All right, Eric Tellum, he's currently the Pistons senior director of player personnel. So that may be somebody to keep an eye on as far as who may be eventually moving up into the front office. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and you know, like I said, it's not made official yet, but um, it's just that's just tough to hear. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I, I want a GM that wants to be here, that wants to build a team for the city, that wants mm -hmm. to be able to be in command of what he's doing. That's what you want out of your GM, right? We've been, like you said, we've been voicing it for a while that. You know, that's just not the way it's been. You know, he's been overpowered and overstepped, obviously, with, you know, partial ownership with the Tellums and you got the Stefanskis of the world. And, you know, they have their prints all over a lot of the things that the Pistons done over the year. Mm -hmm. um, who do we bring in is the question. Um, like you say, you bring it, you look at Eric Tellum, but if we co go from the outside, who do we bring in is the major question for me right now. Um, yeah, that's the major question for me too, bro. Um, and that's kind of the disappointing part, I think, more than anything. Like, if they have the... This is... I want to make this clear too. I was a fan of Troy Weaver. I'm still a fan of Troy Weaver. And I think you are too, King. Mm -hmm. I'm not upset that Trajan Langdon is here. No. Right? I'm not I'm not mad at him for being in the position he's in. He's probably waited for this opportunity. And he's got it. I'm happy for him. It's just unfortunate that when Troy first got here... Yeah, the record may have been better than it was last season, but our outlook for the future 
our flexibility, our cap space, our draft assets were non-existent. The Van Gundy era really put us in a bad spot. Yeah. Right? With that Blake Griffin contract and, and everything else that came with that. So when Troy got here, it was a huge mess he had to clean up. Right? And I feel as if looking back on it in retrospect, it feels as if he was brought in just to clean up that mess. Man, you hit the nail. With the way that Stan Van Gundy left things here, Troy comes in. Um, first of all, frees us from that black hole we were heading towards. Right, right. And, and you know, builds everything, to, you know, all the assets that we have right now in order, you know, to try to build a team and move forward, right? We have these assets right now and we have the, the proper assets to, to add to this team and, you know, get things going real quickly. Yeah. Not taking on desperation contracts and everything else. So he's waiting for that right moment, you know. Right. Um, obviously right. hiccups in the road with his decisions. But we're in a we're we're in a, a pretty decent spot right now to hit the go button. Right. Which I'm definitely not complaining about right now as a Pistons fan. Because mm -hmm. it would have been more if we had to clean up a mess that he left. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly, bro. That's exactly what I was what I was gonna get to, and I'm glad you said that because once again, I'm not upset at Trajan. I'm glad he has an opportunity with a good situation, right? It's it's recognized when he gets here that the team had the worst record, so the ex the the level of expectation for him is not high. But on the flip side, he also has these assets that were given to him by the same person, you know. And so it's just unfortunate that Troy put us in position to have these assets to move forward even though we had a bad record the last few seasons he still put us in a good spot and now he's not given the opportunity to reap the benefits the fruits of his labor of what he put together for us to have these assets to go forward now it's like thanks for doing this and cleaning up this mess now you can now you can go on that's the disappointing part for me is that he's not getting an opportunity to actually use the assets that he created in a sense the mark jackson before steve kerr he was the rick carlisle before larry brown create a good situation so that the next person can come and take credit for it and it's so messed up because he was also getting the blame for things on the flip side when he wasn't making those decisions. So he's getting the blame for things he's not doing and he's not getting any credit for what he built for us to go for it. It just feels like he's just getting screwed, bro. It feels to me like he just got screwed all around. And that's the only part about it that really just kind of bothered me about the whole situation. Here's the actual wrench. The wrench that we always talk about that's been thrown in there, right? You're Troy Weaver and you look over the last two seasons. These two seasons were seasons where... We were supposed to, to see player development with the young players that we have, right? right? And, you know, you'll look at it and say, hey, man, we've been in a lottery, though, for these, these years. That's how you get the assets. Yeah. So that's part of the assets that you probably getting ready to spend in this draft, to be honest. Um, yep. But you, you acquire those picks, you know what I'm saying? And then when it's time, because he never said that, he said we were going to be competitive, right? Which he planned on doing before the wrench came. What was the wrench? Force <laughs> brings Monty Williams yeah. in, you know, and it, it just it just killed everything. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. instead of bringing in the young coach to to bring along with the young players and go step by step like Troy was doing, mm -hmm. you throw the wrench in there and try to put a hurry on the process. Yep, you can't do that as ownership. You cannot do that. You cannot make the mistakes because. 100%. That you wanted the young players to play together this season and develop. This was never going to be a winning season. Let's just get yeah. that out of our heads. It was yeah. never to be that. This was the year for them to play. So now you have the assets to hit the button, say, boom, mm -hmm. let's get some of these uh, players that's going to take us. It's playoff time now. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Let's players in here that's going to get us some wins. We're going to get to these playoffs and really, really compete. Yeah. There's already interest um in troy if he is officially you know let go there's already been phone calls around the league already um so something tells me that he's gonna land on his feet with another organization i'll be rooting for him i'm rooting for trajan as well right i want to see trajan do well because what does that mean if he's doing well then that means the team's doing well and that's yeah. all we really want at the end of the day so now pivoting what does this mean for monty monty williams i've seen a lot of questions about that in the chat about what does this mean for monty williams and to be honest with you bro i'm surprised and i'm only surprised due to the information that we have received up to this point regarding monty williams right 
this could be possibly an indication that Monty may be staying. Uh, because I originally thought when that article came out regarding the Pistons being willing to, to move off of him, that his job would be more so in jeopardy than Troy's job because Troy was his name was nowhere to be found in that article. And a lot of times when you have a new president come in, that president come in, put a stamp on the organization, clean house, start over, bring his guys in. It would have been really plausible mm -hmm. to just include Troy Weaver. It would just make sense. But for them to not mention Troy and only mention Monty gave me the indication that maybe they were actually going to move off Monty and keep Troy. But, you know, as we see and as we've been told, that is not the case. So what this means for Monty, I don't know. I don't know what this means for Monty. I don't know if this means he his job is safe. I don't know if this means that they're just going to play it out after this season and see how this next season goes. I don't know what they're waiting for. So once again, I'm coming back to that press conference. Everything for me comes back to this press conference. And hopefully we get that in the next week. We know they're just kind of getting their ducks in a row as of right now before they make any official announcements, which we understand. What does your gut tell you, King, personally, when it comes to Monty? Do you think his job is safe? What are you feeling? I think his job is safe. Okay. Oh, yeah, you hear the, the who blah about, hey, we'll, we'll eat the contract and everything else. And, you know, I think due to this right here, I think Monty's job is done. You know, get the man out the door that didn't want me here. I think he's staying, man. I just want him to want to be here and to want to coach this team right. and to, to take this team to the next level. If you if you're not there mentally, you need to be transparent with this franchise. I understand, you know, the money and everything else, but do us all a solid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And move on if you don't really want to be here. As a head coach and as, you know, you look at the, the point where this team is right now, especially you look at the situation with Kay Cunningham. Yeah. I just want to coach that wants us. Obviously, Langman got some work to do, right? Um, you know, ownership has some work to yeah. do. Can we see some some old Pistons faces come around? Can we see? Hope so. Hope so. You know what I'm saying? So, like I say, let's just give it a chance to materialize, I guess. You know, yes. see where this goes. I'm going to give it a yes. shot. Um, yes. Even though we're tired of giving shots, we're going to give it a shot. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long time, right? You look at the last time we were really competing, you know, really competing in the playoffs. It's been forever. Yeah. Especially... Pistons. The NBA is better when the Pistons are good, man. Bro, want to get there? 2019 was it 19 or 18? I think it was 19. Last time we were in the playoffs. Then 2016. Before that was 2009. Those are the last three times you've been in the playoffs. You've been swept every single time. And those are the highlights. Those are the highlights for us when it comes to the playoffs. It's competing in games, not winning them, not winning them, competing in them. So it's time for a change. It's time for a change. I don't I don't care how it happens. It needs to be now. It needs to be right now. I honestly don't think that Troy Weaver was the problem. I think he was part of the problem, like everybody else was part of the problem. But he wasn't the cause of the problem, I think, that warranted him being fired. When you look at all the moving parts that go into <laughs> what happened this season. So, but I guess somebody's got to be the fall guy, right? So, hopefully, like I said, he lands on his feet. Wish the best for him. And moving forward, I wish the best for Trajan. And whoever the new GM is going to be. And I hope that Trajan has more flexibility. Otherwise, what in the world are we doing? I think he will be because he has ties to Arntella. But then again, Troy Weaver also had ties to Arntella. It's kind of so, hard to find somebody around the league that's that doesn't got ties to Arn. You know, right. That's true. In the that's true. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, man, you know, I just want to see Langdon have a shot. You know what I'm saying? Don't yeah, absolutely him be a, a yes man, and you're still doing a bid behind closed doors. Yeah, let him yeah. generally do what he does as the the president of basketball operations, mm -hmm. and and let's see what happens, man. I, like I said, we talked about you know last week we talked about his experience. Well, obviously, this is still building his his I'll say resume, right? Yep. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. I'm pulling for him. He really seems to be very organized about what he does. Somebody who really just goes about his business, does his work. But he just seems very organized. He wasn't actually part of the Zion Williamson drafting. He was hired a few days after that for a few, 
who was wondering about that, but he was very active with a lot of the decision making. So I do have confidence that he can come here and at least kind of right the ship if he's given the opportunity to. Once again, it, it all comes down to it doesn't matter how good you are at your job. If you're not allowed to do it, what does it matter? Yeah. You know, so we don't know to what extent Troy was allowed to or not to do his job. We just know that he wasn't allowed to the way he was supposed to. So please allow Trajan to have more flexibility to do his job. That's all I ask for. Whoever it is, if it was Trajan or someone else, it doesn't matter. Allow them to do the job that they're hired to do and get out of the way. Franchises, they work better when you allow them to do what they're supposed to do. In the ring, you knock me down, I'm getting back up. Cause when I step on the floor, you know your time's up. I'm on my way up and I'm not gonna stop. We headed straight to the top in the low. I gotta face it, I got no time to waste it.